Games all pretty much have to reward you for doing good, but some of them make fun of you when you do bad. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 15 times video games roasted you for being bad. At number 15 is any death from the Batman Arkham series. It's kind of a classic and has to be mentioned in a list like this. Anytime you go up against a villain in the Batman Arkham, you know, whatever, series, either in a fight or you're just on their turf, if Batman ends up dead, then a short cutscene will play with the villain looming over the corpse and insulting you. Basically just talking a little trash, you know? There are a ton of these hidden in these games, certain ones more insulting than others. Honestly, some of them are so unique and cool that a lot of players intentionally die in certain sections just to see them. That loser didn't stand a chance! <laughs> I mean, look at me! At number 14 is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. During the Colosseum section of the game, commentators actually talk over your battles. During the final battle in this section against the Hell House, which is, by the way, a very difficult battle, Honestly, if you have trouble with it, it's not necessarily because you suck. However, it may take you a couple of times, and after a while, you may be a little bit disheartening, let's say. And the announcers don't help. If you die while facing the Hell House, which is, like I said, very possible, then the commentators will make fun of you for losing. It's actually the only part in the game where you are insulted for losing, and it's against one of the hardest bosses, relatively speaking. At number 13 is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. If you make a mistake or deliberately shoot a civilian, you'll get an are you serious message and then the game kicks you out and you have to start over from the mission select screen. It's meant to happen only when you're deliberately shooting at someone that's clearly a civilian, but it's also not hard to screw up and get it by accident, especially in the mission where you're raiding a house and you see this woman run over to a crib. It could be a fake out or you just could be on edge and you pull the trigger. It slaps you with that whole are you serious message and just boots you out of the mission unceremoniously. And number 12 is Bully. If you get caught too many times by perfects or cops, you get sent to detention. Before you go there, you have to listen to the principal chew you out about whatever you did and then you have to mow the lawn. And I don't mean you have to watch a cutscene of you mowing the lawn, I mean you have to engage in a very tedious and trust me when I say this, it is amazingly tedious, this lawn mowing mini game. What's worse, the more you get into trouble, the bigger area you have to mow. So you have to get in trouble less, which is not necessarily an easy prospect. At number 11 is Jack and Daxter and Jack 3. Now this is interesting, kind of a precursor to the Arkham series, but Instead of a villain making fun of you when you die, it is your best friend in the entire world. Every time you die in the original Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy on the PS2, Daxter, your animal sidekick, will run right up to your face and make some comment about how you're dead, usually insulting you for dying. It happens again in Jack 3, but not quite as often. Either way, like it makes sense when a bad guy insults you for dying, but your best friend, I mean, kind of a dick move. Like, wouldn't you expect him to mourn you, perhaps? Say goodnight, Jack. At number 10 is Mortal Kombat 3 and Mortal Kombat 11. So you get all the way to the end of the game. I mean, to some extent, that's showing that you don't suck. But you wouldn't know that from the way Shao Kahn, the last boss, treats you if you lose enough times to him. He will just simply say to you, it's official. You suck. He's actually full of insults for the player, and it doesn't help that he's one of the hardest bosses in fighting game history, so good luck with that. And if that's not bad enough, he'll sometimes stop mid-match to insult you. That's how sure of victory he is. As a playable character in Mortal Kombat 11, he's not afraid to do the same thing, but this time you're actually going to have to be the one that backs it up. At number nine is Postal 2. Like, 
even a game that is about doing stupid stuff finds a way to insult you. If you save too often, i.e. act to save scum, the postal dude is gonna make fun of you for it. My grandmother could beat the game if she saved as much as you do. I mean, it's a fairly insecure way to play a video game, so maybe you're even gonna get some crap from me. But even using cheats will get you some lines from the dude. He will attack you just for taking the easy way out, according to him. But let's not forget that Postal isn't exactly working your way up. And number eight is GLaDOS from Portal. Now, here's the thing. GLaDOS is just a non-stop source of player mockery throughout the entirety of the Portal games, but especially in the second game, where the AI has a chip on his shoulder over you defeating them in the first game. Like, most of the insults aren't even from you playing poorly or anything, it's just GLaDOS insulting you. They will start roasting you for your gameplay skills, though, if you start taking too long to complete puzzles, however. Like, the longer you take to finish a puzzle, the more GLaDOS will insult you. I want to congratulate you on beating the odds and somehow managing to pack on a few pounds. At number 7 is Deus Ex Human Revolution. There is a side quest where you arrest this dirty cop named Jack O'Malley, which, I mean, perfect name for a dirty cop, isn't it? It's during the Detroit section of the game, though. When you go to find him, he offers you a bribe to let him go, and if you actually take it, the game roasts you with an achievement called The Take. It's not really a harsh name, but if you read the description, it gets downright rude. Greedy bastard, you accepted O'Malley's blood money and let him go. Like, the game calls you a greedy bastard for doing a thing that the game essentially presents you with as an easy option. At number six is Demolition Man. Now, this is just a truly ridiculous FMV game, which was something that was really in vogue in the 1990s full motion video games. With the advent of the CD game format and actually being able to hold video in a game format, people were like, it's time. Let's make games with full motion video. Uh, this particular game really didn't have anything noteworthy about it besides that Sly Stallone played his character from the movie Demolition Man. And when you get a game over, there's a full motion video of Sly Stallone making fun of you, and then there is audio of children laughing. Now, the thing that makes me particularly confused, he makes Star Wars references. Like, he calls you Puke Skywalker, which... What? What is that about? I mean, I don't know how to label that, but, like, you're gonna see it if you play this game. It was basically impossible, so it's just Sly Stallone rubbing in how impossible and unfair this game really was. At number five is dying in Friday the 13th way back on the NES. The original Nintendo Entertainment System. This is one of the most infamous game over screens of all time. It has to be seen to be believed. It's just like, hey, you and your friends are dead. Game over. It is, it's just one of the most harsh and blunt game over screens of all time. And I'll tell you the reason why it's particularly fun. Back in the NES days, games didn't have as much humor in them. And I don't know if it was on purpose or not looking back on it, but I have to imagine it was. I just thought this is hilarious. You and your friends are dead. Game over. At number four is the Oath of Felgana. Here's another pretty blunt one. That's just basically straight up calling you out for failing. Let's say you die over 10 times to a single boss. It gives you an achievement called consult an FAQ already. I guess the question that is most frequently asked is, how can I not die 10 times at a boss in Wise Oath of Felgana? At number three is Animal Crossing. Mr. Rossetti gets pretty mad at you if you constantly reset the game. Like, okay, Animal Crossing is kind of a weird life simulator that expects you to keep playing even if you make a mistake or don't play the most optimal way. The modern game has auto saves, but in the original on the GameCube, it was basically nothing stopping you from just hitting the reset button if you want to redo stuff. That is, unless Mr. Rossetti has anything to say about it. Like, if you reset the game, Mr. Rossetti will appear and give you the riot act, explaining in a pretty long dialogue that you shouldn't be resetting the game when you're playing Animal Crossing. He has multiple versions of this rant, and each one is longer and more unhinged than the previous. Basically, he is intentionally long-winded as a punishment for resetting. This is a case where it's worth seeing at least once because the dialogue is actually really funny. 
At number two is FTL, faster than light. If you manage to kill all of your crew during the tutorial, then a special message is displayed. It says, somehow you've died during the introduction training exercise. Feel free to try again, but this doesn't bode well for your mission. It is, it is understated, but absolutely devastating. I love this one. That is like Fargo, Minnesotan type passive aggression. And finally, at number one is The Bard's Tale, which you can play on the original Xbox and the PS2. When you die, the narrator of the game just flat out makes fun of you. Like if you get killed by enemies, he'll just flat out say, I love a happy ending. But that's nothing compared to this. It is one of the cruelest burns I've ever seen, hidden on the game's disc of all places. On the front of the disc, it says, for a really disturbing image, flip the disc over. Now, I don't know if you remember this about discs or if you're too young for that. Ah, to be you, if so. Uh, the back of a disc is a mirror. Couple of quick bonus games for you. Scarface, The World Is Yours is the video game version of the classic movie. And it's just as vulgar as Tony Montana himself. Case in point, when you die, it just says, you f up. That's all for now though. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.